Yes, yeah, still with the top flight football in Jamaica, the battle for playoff positions in the Jamaica Premier League is set to go down to the wire with three rounds remaining before the playoffs begin. This is the Jamaica Premier League table, Cavalier and Arnett Gardens both on 46 points. Cavalier though with a superior goal difference, plus 23 to Arnett Gardens, plus 19. Mount Pleasant now in third position on 42 points. Remember the top six advance to the playoffs. Harborview in fourth position and 40 points on below in 5th on 39 and Waterhouse in 6th position on 37 points. Uh, Portmore United just 2 points behind on 35. Cavalier and Arnett Gardens, if they finish in the top 2, will advance automatically to the semi-final round of the playoffs. So they would get a first round bye. And then Chapleton Maroons already relegated from the Jamaica Premier League. Yeah, Falkland in big trouble, put it that way. Um, very united there in 12th position. This is what we have to look forward to this weekend. Portmore United will play Humble Lion. Malines United versus Tivoli Gardens. Waterhouse versus Cavalier. That should be a great game. Falkland versus Arnett Gardens. That game will be live on Sportsmax. The Sportsmax games on Sunday coming from the from Montego Bay. Montego Bay United to play Harborview and then Don Beholden versus Vere United and Mount Pleasant versus Chapleton Maroons matches to be carried live on your home of champions as well. Two of the teams are fighting for a top two place, which would guarantee their semi-final berth. Arnett Gardens and Harborview both travel to Montego Bay this weekend. Football analyst Lejay Williams is still with us. Lejay, give us the main storylines in the Jamaica Premier League this weekend. Ooh, uh, there's a lot to go around, but of course I have to focus on you know the games that we will be seeing live, and I think that means that I have to focus on first of all Arnett Gardens, Arnett coming off of a, a really a close close battle with Dumbo Holding, they got the one 0 win in the end, courtesy of Fabian Reed who's still inching down that top scorer burst. Something that he said that he's not too concerned about, but we know that he he's someone that. That would be a big honor for him to really get back to that top scorer berth. And then, of course, Harborview also being in action. And I think with Harborview, it's a little bit more interesting because Harborview are in the semi-final of the Link Cup. So if they were to finish outside of the top two in this JPL season, they would have to play a lot of games around the same time, a lot of high-intensity games as well. Because the semi-finals of the Link Cup and the playoff stages of the JPL are very close in proximity so that's something to look out for Harborview you do have a squad that can deal with that but when you consider the fact that Cavalier in the semi-final of link up but they'll have a bye more than likely yeah. consider the fact that Arnett Gardens aren't in the link up and will have a bye so just the teams around them that they'll be looking to beat towards the end of the season they'll have fresher legs going into that so Harborview I think they'll have a lot to play for this weekend they'll definitely want to at least try to get into that top two still yeah, and um, the Montego Bay doubleheader uh, that we are focusing on on, on Sunday, uh, which, which of those, well, the Falkland fixture isn't, you know, that, but it's it's a team that is in their home base. So I guess from a fan standpoint, that will be an important fixture for the fans in attendance at the Catherine Hall's uh, sports complex. But your thoughts on the, the, the feature game of the evening, that's Mobe Harborview. Mobe have been playing really well as of late. Uh, they're, 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 well... They did concede a big scoreline to Dumbo in a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But I think that's more that goes against what they've been playing like. They've been much more aggressive and forward thinking as well. So I think they're going to give Harborview a very rough time. But Harborview are known to deal with this end of season pressure well. And, uh, <laughs> well, they have, yeah. Yeah, they have been. Yeah. And they're, they're champions for a reason. So they're going to be getting into it um, last weekend. It was, it was a weird game against Malines, to say the least. So I don't really want to put too much stock into that draw. I think against more mid-table-ish opposition, all things being equal, I don't see why they wouldn't come away with a win against Montego Bay this weekend. Yeah, that Portmore United humble Lion game, I think, is going to be a massive one. Huge. Because it could go a long way in determining who gets into the final six. How do you see that one going? That's, that's a really tough one. Humble Line have been playing some really good stuff and especially they've been really, really sharp defensively. Yeah. They're the best defensive team in the league at this current position. So it's Portmore, they're going to have to go all out to try and break down that unit and then stop Humble Line from scoring as well. But even on that thought, the Waterhouse game, that's going to be a very big game for them as well because Waterhouse, they have to get a result to stop Portmore from breathing down their neck. So a lot of big games all around, but 
yeah, big big time towards the end of the season, we're going to see what teams are really made of. Yeah, and just to point out that if uh, Portmore United win and then Waterhouse lose, then Portmore United would leapfrog Waterhouse into a playoff position. So, which they had a couple of weeks ago. A couple of yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot could happen based on how the the matches turn out this weekend. Yeah, I'm a, Waterhouse they're holding on. Portmore chasing them just last week. Portmore in sixth and Waterhouse passing because Portmore dropped points. So there's, I think there's going to be a lot of top top turby. Each team are going to leapfrog each other from now until the end of the season, but. Uh, some big results to go around still. Yeah, there was also some news from Cavalier this week. Two of Cavalier's linchpins, Reggae Boys Dwayne Atkinson and Richard King, have secured moves to the Icelandic League and will be leaving the island this weekend. Yeah, what kind of an impact will this have on Cavalier season, Lige? I know that this is Cavalier's model of you know developing players and then moving them on. But this is huge. This is huge for them. These are their two best players, in my opinion. Dwayne Atkinson, the source of everything that they really create from an attacking sense. He has over 10 assists in the league, if you're counting one penalties as well. He has 10 goals in the league as well. So he's just been playing extremely well for them this season. I know Sir Lance is very fond of him as well. Yeah. And Richard King is a young national defender. Yeah. So he's a, a key part of what everything that they try to do, not only in defense, but he also moves into midfield as well. And Cavalier, if you think about it, don't have the strongest squad depth-wise because of the amount of or the number of young players that they use. Mm -hmm. So going into now this part of the season where they will have to try and manage how they play in the link up and in the league as well, yeah. it's going to be really interesting to see how they will do that and if they can still push yeah. to try and win the league. Yeah, just a point of of qualification here, uh, Liz. You say they don't have a deep squad because of how many young players they have, but they have a deep squad if you look at potential and the quality of these young players because someone like Christopher Ainsworth only 17 years old but he has played really really well and played with a lot of maturity so I, I, I agree with you that losing King and uh, Atkinson would be huge blows for them but somehow I think I think Rudolph Speed would be confident that he has quality in his squad to not completely reverse the loss of those 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 players but still have Cavaliers hopes up. Yeah, I think defensively they'll, they'll probably be okay. Richard King is a very good player, probably is their best defender, but I think with the Leng and Ming around there, they have experience yes. to really, anyone who comes into that back three with them, they can guide them around. That's right, yeah. But I think in an attacking sense, someone like Dwayne Atkinson, who you can say is maybe a top three player in the league, if not even higher than that. Yes. It's well, you don't very have to convince hard. me about yeah. it. I can see it's, it's, have, yeah. it's very hard to, it's not only the output you have to replace, it's just the influence. Yeah. So in certain games, yes, they have Ronaldo Webster, for example, yeah. Ronaldo Robinson, for example, who are good attacking players, but it's a certain influence. Those players will flow, float in and out of games. In those big playoff moments, as we saw with someone like Trayvon Reed last year, yeah. when you need someone of just extreme quality to carry over the line, that's what the Dwayne Atkinsons of the world are for. So yeah. it's going to be Agreed. interesting to see how they yeah, move on. Agree. Yeah, Good point. We're up on a break and talking about quality uh, to bring you over the line, DJ. I can't let you leave without asking you this. <laughs> Where was the quality when Arsenal needed it to take them over the line today? You see this behind me? The Jamaica Premier League segment. So I'll leave that yeah, one but, for but no But we're comment. wrapping up and we're, we're giving you an opportunity to talk about your beloved Arsenal. Are you that hurt that you can't I think the producer foster is, a response? He's the, not. He's talking to me. He's talking to you as well. do better than that. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't mount a defence for Arsenal. What defence is there to mount, Ricardo? All right, you said it. That's it for a Jamaica Premier League segment. And that might be it for Arsenal and trying to win the English Premier League as well. We'll be back.